Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Blue Monday, how I hear Blue Monday. Got to work, lack of sleep all deep. He'll come to. It is a fact that Obama is changing the demographics of America forever. It is a fact that they have flooded Virginia with so many migrants from El Salvador, a wonderful country, by the way, with wonderful people, that, are you ready for this one? You're not going to believe it. A great article by Julia Hahn of Breitbart, the best immigration article I have seen forever. One-fifth the nation of El Salvador is living inside the U.S. of A. And now I'm going to talk about the death squads that the Democrats are bringing into America. I know this is shocking. I realize this is upsetting. But if I read that the MS-13 gang is now entrenched in the land of Colonial Williamsburg, would you not call them a death squad? Has anyone noticed that they have death squads now that the police have to face off against? Police who carry sidearms facing those with machine guns? Why? More green cards issued in a year than an entire population of the original 13 colonies. More green cards were issued in one year by Obama than the entire population of the original 13 colonies. One-fifth the nation of El Salvador is living inside the U.S. of A. Why is Obama transforming America into South America? Or shall I say Central America? Why are they here? Why is this corrupt criminal federal government printing millions of visas why is this corrupt group of criminals distributing these admission tickets to the poorest and least developed nations in the world why is this criminal administration doing conducting more demographic change in the span of the life of the average person in virginia than many societies have experienced in millennia until 1970, only one in 100 Virginians was born outside the United States. By 2012, one in every nine Virginians is foreign born. So now you know what the puppet master had in mind when he said he was going to transform America. And he's bringing in death squads with them. You say, that's crazy. Don't they all come here to work? Aren't all immigrants hardworking? Are they? Is that why one-third of all of our prisoners are illegal immigrants? Did they come here to work or to work the system? Now, having opened the show with that shocking remark and that shocking analysis, I would tell you the show is going to be more than just talking about immigration and how it's destroying America, not healing America, and how Obama is doing this on purpose. Obama and his left-wing criminal minions are doing this on purpose. They're changing the demographics to change the voting patterns of any state that still votes Republican. Now, whether or, not you like the, now, whether or not you like Republicans is irrelevant. This criminal administration is eliminating a two-party system. This criminal administration is creating a one-party system. This criminal administration is Im mimicking what Ger Jerry Brown and his gang did in California, where there is now a single party, no checks, no balances, an out-of-control state with a, by the way, high-speed rail to nowhere, which is, I find ironic, because if you think it's about being nice to the immigrants, you're crazy. It's about stealing billions of dollars a year in revenue under the guise of immigrant uh, favoritism. I was reading that in Italy, the mafia is making a fortune on the illegals coming in from Africa. I said, oh, it's always, it's always criminals making money on something. I said, well, how are they making a fortune on the immigrants flooding into Italy? Well, the same way that I'll name a few groups, Baptist Family Services, Jewish Family Services, Catholic Family Services are making new fortunes, the new gold mines in housing, feeding, and caring for the illegal aliens from Central America. What do you think, it's free? You're paying for it. You're paying for this. That's the secret. It's all criminals behind it all. 
whether it's the criminal state or actual criminal organizations, and I don't care if they disguise themselves as a religion. Take a look at the salaries they pay themselves. See how many of their relatives have been hired in these wonderful Christian family service organizations. It's all about the money. So that's topic number one. It's not the only thing in my life. Uh, I have someone who called me this morning panicking over what Obama's doing and saying this country cannot survive. It cannot survive this onslaught of illegal aliens who will all vote socialist for the next hundred years. Their children's children will vote socialist for a hundred years. They come from a despotic nation, and they're converting this nation into the country they left behind. But on top of it all, we're paying them to do it. So he's panicking. He's saying this is bad. It's like the French Revolution. They're going to wind up with guillotines hanging us all, anyone they don't like. I said, eh, I don't think that'll happen here. No, not there, not there. I don't think it'll happen here. Not at all. No, not at all. It can't happen here, can it? Could an imposter ever become president? Nah, can't happen here. Can a totally illegitimate government ever emerge in the United States of America with everyone watching, doing a deal with a terrorist state like Iran, giving them a path to a nuclear bomb? Nah, it can't happen here. As a very, I would say, a revered comedian said over the weekend on Aaron Klein's show on WABC, do you know that in the restaurants of New York they have an inspection system? You can surprise any restaurant without notice that you can walk in and inspect them. So we're protected in New York from a bad tuna fish. But we're not protected from a bomb, but we're protected from a bad quality of a tuna fish, Jackie Mason uh, joked on Aaron's show. Can you believe that? Remember Anytime, Anywhere? Well, that goes along with the, 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 uh, the criminal's statement, you can keep your doctor if you like him. Obama is a criminal president. Obama has committed one crime against this nation after another, and he continues to get away with it. Now, I know this is shocking. And I know you don't want to hear it. And I know we shouldn't do Obama bashing. And I realize it's summer. And I realize this is old. And I realize that everyone really loves Obamacare. Everyone loves uh, Iran's bomb. Everyone loves the immigrants flooding in from Central America. Everyone loves the gangs that are being brought in along with the diseases. Everyone loves that. Do they? When did you last vote on that? Well, you did just vote on it. And your vote was nullified by the criminal gang that runs America. The vote occurred, if you remember, in November. I encouraged you with my book, Stop the Coming Civil War, to vote. I said, hold your nose and vote Republican. Those were my exact words. Hold your nose and vote Republican. And then I said, we'll put their feet to the fire and force them to do our bidding, the will of the people. Well, have we been able to force them to do the will of the people, the bidding of the will of the people? No, not with McConnell, the turkey gobbler, not with John Boehner, the drunk. These guys are not part of the solution they're not even part of the problem they are the problem in fact mcconnell and boehner are worse than obama because they were put there to stop obama okay no more obama for now had a great weekend photographer was out with my publisher for the book government zero which will be out in october just in time for october the october surprise of michael savage and that book, Government Zero, is going to be my last and biggest political book. Of course, the publisher said, no, come on, you're kidding. I said, no, I'm not kidding. And then we took pictures of me and Teddy for a Teddy book coming out next year. That's the book I'm really looking forward to. So even when the communists run the country, I guess people are going to still love their dogs, unless they ban dogs. You know, you never know with the Islamism creeping into the country. You know, there's only one religion that hates dogs. Did you, oh, you didn't know that? That's an embarrassing fact. You know, that's inconvenient truth. There's only one group of people who hate dogs. Did you know that? And he's bringing in 100,000 of them a month. Ah, what the heck, though? He's such a good man. Now he's in Kenya lecturing his homeland about gay rights. This is, this is beyond belief, the audacity and insanity of this. This guy, we have a word for it in the street that I can't use because it's not a family-friendly word. This guy is a crazy man. He goes to Kenya, his homeland, and he lectures the Kenyans who are super conservative socially on gay rights, telling them they should accept gays in their country. And the president of Kenya's flabbergasted that this guy, this imposter, comes over there and tells them what they should believe. And then Obama gives it away and he says, yeah, but I know that there are people with religious and uh, social beliefs that don't match what the state wants. But you know what? If it's state law, you got to do it. And I said, national socialism. I said, Hitler. National Socialism was the state overriding the will of the people. 
National Socialism, or for those of you who can't add, Nazis, National Socialism. National Socialism was the state overriding religion of the people of Germany and overriding the will of the people in most cases. Don't assume all the Germans were initially Nazis. They were not. It was a small splinter group that used similar tactics to deceive and then to control and then to intimidate and then absolutely to be what they became, a fascist dictatorship. So he goes to Kenya and he says, it's the state that should rule everything. The law of the land is what the state creates and you could take your religion and shove it and you could take your beliefs and shove them because I am Barack Obama and I'm in my homeland now. I'm lecturing my homeland's people what to think about such things. That's topic number three. Now there's more to come. You know, the openings to these shows are great on Monday. I have so much energy. Much more happened over the weekend. The dog pictures left me exhausted three hours on Friday night, then three hours on Saturday morning, and another hour in the afternoon light because the photographer's the best. Came out from New York, Vincent Ramini. He is good. Loves dogs. Got on the floor with Teddy. Asked me to get on the floor with Teddy. I said, no, it's against my religion. So I didn't get on the floor with Teddy, but... He got great pictures of the two of us in the in the Dodge Hellcat. Unbelievable. Wait till you see that picture. Me, sunglasses, wearing a great shirt with Teddy on my arm looking out the door of the car, tightly framed around the black pearlescent paint. You don't even see it's a car, what it is, in the Hellcat. One, nice, a nice weekend, but we were exhausted from it. In fact, I was so exhausted from the photography that I overslept by three hours this morning. I was shocked to wake up at 9.30. I'm normally up at 6.45. First light comes through the curtain, I'm out of bed. I woke up, I said, 9.30, drained. How does a model take it? No wonder they're all like anorexic and junkies. And they all look like Goldie Horn. I mean, I don't understand it. I mean, it's very exhausting. Look what it did to the people on Fox News who've been on for too long. How it wears them out. They happen to look like a tuna fish sandwich that needs a facelift. Speaking of tuna fish sandwiches, I could use one right now. So before I take my first break... I want to talk about immigration again and Salvador. And it's going to take me a while to do so, but I met a, a man who emigrated from El Salvador to this country in 19, I don't know, I think he said 78. He's an older gentleman. I was outside a dance club yesterday at 6 o'clock. I went to hear some Latin music and sit in the car and listen to it. From the street with the dog, I needed to break it away, you know, break off the, from the tension. And I walked out with the dog and a man came up. He said, are you Michael Savage? I figured, look, you know, he's from another country. What are they going to hate me? Because it's mainly a Latino crowd. The guy loved me to death. I've been listening to you from the day you went on the radio. He said, I come from the background that you do, even though you're from European origin. I'm from Salvadoran origin. He said, the people are morons in this country. He said, they don't even understand what Obama is. He's a communist. He said, I ran from communism. I came to America for a new beginning, and I had it. I had a, a wonderful life here. I built a new life here. And these Democrats are destroying this life. They're bringing us to what we had in Salvador he said, we'll soon have death squads here if these people are not stopped. I am not making this up. That's a Salvadoran immigrant talking to Michael Savage. The reverse of what you vermin on the left would like to believe is actually going on. True immigrants to America love this country. And they don't hate the white man. They love the white man. And you demons are one day going to pay for what you're doing to this country. According to him, I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Similarly, with respect to uh, the rights of, of gays and lesbians, I've been consistent all across Africa on this. I believe in the principle of treating people equally under the law and that they are deserving of equal protection under the law and that the state should not discriminate against people based on their sexual orientation. And I say that recognizing that there may be people who have different religious or cultural beliefs, but the issue is how does the state operate relative to people? Nazism. Write it down. Did you hear what that man just said? Oh, you may have different religious or cultural beliefs here in Africa amongst you idiots. 
you throwbacks. But the issue was, how does the state operate relative to people? See, if he screamed it like Hitler, you'd say he's a bad man. But he speaks with a forked tongue so smoothly. It almost sounds reasonable. But if you analyze what he just said, he just said the state trumps religion, the state trumps culture, the state trumps the will of the people, drop dead, which is how we can flood America with more immigrants than the country can ever, ever take in. Illegals now outnumber the unemployed in the United States of America, according to the latest article posted on the Drudge Report. The illegals now outnumber the unemployed in the USA. Immigrant flood turning Virginia blue. One-fifth the nation of El Salvador living inside the USA. MS-13 gang in the land of Colonial Williamsburg. More green cards issued in the year than in the entire population of the original 13 colonies. And you're telling me they all come here to work? Are you people insane? Are you people insane? Now he's in Kenya. It's not bad enough what he did here. Now he's telling them, throw away your culture, throw away your religion, and the state trumps all. The state what does that mean, the state trumps all? You realize how dangerous that is? To say the state trumps religion, the state trumps culture, the state trumps all? What if you get a fascist dictatorship? How, what if you get a fascist dictatorship? Excuse me, what if? What if? See, but he doesn't scream, he doesn't yell, it's not German music in the background, there's no armbands, there's no Horst Vessel song, but what he's saying is as repugnant as the speeches of the man we are referring to. Not with regard to gays necessarily. I am taking umbrage with his statement when he says that there may be people who have different religious or cultural beliefs, but the issue is how does the state operate relative to the people, meaning the state trumps all. You get it? Just as the church was destroyed in, the Russia, after, the, in Russia after the Bolshevik Revolution, Many of you don't know that, but the church was not fascistic. The Christian church was destroyed by the communists in Russia after the revolution. The same way Obama has compromised the churches and synagogues in this country by buying them off on this immigrant care. That's a full sentence. Don't cut me off like Trump. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Yeah, that's not exactly bumper music. It was the uh, Nazi theme song called the Horst Vessel song, which I play to remind you of where governments can take a nation in the world, especially when you have a madman, a madman ruining a nation who's going around the world trying to ruin the world as quickly as he can. Not good enough that he's dumping the world's, let us say, excess populations on America. Uneducated, no money, no willingness to become American. They will not speak English. What are they bringing them in for? Cheap labor in the factories, for sure. The poultry farms in Virginia, for sure. But really, it's about changing a Republican-oriented state like Virginia into a Democrat socialist state as quickly as possible and unchangeable. But let me ask you something. China is selling off stocks like mad right now. There's a meltdown on Wall Street, in case you're, uh, you're not looking at the China markets falling apart. And China's markets are falling apart. It's affecting markets around the world. I'm going to talk a lot about economics now. I'm going to go into a whole thing about what the Bible, how the Bible predicts a global economic collapse and what I learned over the weekend from someone to do with Shemitah and what happened in the past during this period. I never heard of the word Shemitah. I thought he was talking about Shmata, a rag in the garment center. He said to me, do you know what Shemitah is? I said, you said Shmata, it's a rag. He said, no, it's not a rag. Shemitah in the Bible is the people of Israel commanded to let the land lie fallow every seven years. And during the seventh year of the sabbatical, the Shemitah, there would be no sowing and no reaping. And God took that very seriously. It was meant to permit the land to recover. And it is said that the failure to observe these Sabbath years was one of the main reasons cited in the Bible for why the Jewish people were exiled to Babylon in 586 B.C. 
Now, let's look at what that means for you today and the meltdown of the stock market in China. In 1931, a solar eclipse took place on September 12th, the end of a Shemitah year. Eight days later, England abandoned the gold standard, setting off market crashes and bank failures around the world. It ushered in the greatest month-long stock market percentage crash in Wall Street history. Again, 1987, a solar eclipse took place September 23rd, again the end of a Shemitah year. Less than 30 days later came Black Monday, the greatest percentage crash in Wall Street history. The 1994 bond market massacre is remembered with horror by those who lived through it. Yields on 30-year treasuries jumped some 200 basis points in the first nine months of the year, hammering investors and financial firms. Uh, it thrust Mexico into crisis and bankrupted Orange County. Again, pay attention to the month and the dates. What, other, what else happened in the Shemitah years? On 9-11, September 11th, 2001, planes were flown into the World Trade Center towers. Bush shut down the banks for six days. They were closed on the day before Rosh Hashanah, September 16th, 2001. But they reopened the next day on Rosh Hashanah, September 17th, 01, and the stock market dropped more than 700 points. What does that have to do with what I'm telling you about? That large decline in the stock market happened on Rosh Hashanah in 2001, which was the beginning of the next seven-year cycle, Shemitah. Only three more. Listen carefully. Seven years later, on September 29, 2008, the day before Rosh Hashanah, that's the Jewish New Year, September 30th, 2008, the stock market dropped 777 points. Interesting number, isn't it? Seven years later, on September 29, 2008, the day before the Jewish New Year of Rosh Hashanah, September 30th, 2008, the stock market dropped 777 points. The largest one-day decline in the history of the market triggered the current Great Recession. This happened on the day before Rosh Hashanah in 2008. So what's coming this Jewish New Year, which is just around the corner? Are you paying attention? The current seven-year cycle will end on September 13th, 2015, the day before Rosh Hashanah. And the author of this, Jonathan Kahn, is not predicting an economic collapse on September 13th, 2015, but he is alerting people to this trend of what happens. The Bible does predict a global economic collapse, and Jonathan Kahn's information on these economic issues should bear watching. Later on in the show, I'm gonna talk about the false pope and the prophecy of St. Malachi. This is a false pope. This is a false pope invited by a false president and a false Congress to speak in Congress, a nation that prides itself on a separation of church and state, unheard of! So why would this false pope be invited to speak before Congress by a false president and a false Congress? Why? Why would they violate the tenets of the United States of America, the U.S. Constitution itself? Why would they invite this con man, this con man pope, to speak about global warming, an issue of which he knows nothing, zero, nothing? Moreover, why is he speaking to Congress? Why not speak in uh, the St. Patrick's Cathedral? Why is he speaking in the United States Congress? Because the false president wants him to put forth the big lie about so-called global warming so they can push the people further and further and further into the debt of the state. New world order, one world government, new world order, one world government, new world order, one world government, new world order, NWO, stuff the crazy right has been warning you about for 30 years. When I first began a radio, we get callers on this, ah, you're nuts. Ah, you right-wingers. What do you know, New World Order? What New World Order? Here it is. Here's Obama going to Africa after wrecking the society that he was living in his whole life that rewarded him so well after decimating the society that gave this man and his wife so much. He goes to Africa and tells them, you know what, doesn't matter what your culture or religion teaches you. What matters is what the state says. What state is he talking about? He's talking to the president of Kenya who says, I'm not into gay rights. What state does he mean? Why, the state of the world, the world order. He's talking about the government of the world that's emerging that will soon lecture those dumb Kenyans on their primitive ways. Get it? Okay, so I've given you a lot. I get it. It's a summer day. If I were a normal person, I'd be uh, in a bungalow colony 
in the Catskill Mountains, sitting in a beach chair in the shade, drinking a diet soda, and watching the kids play in the swimming pool. But suddenly it's not 1955, and I was only a mere child then, so I can only go back and forward at one time too often and have the audience left in the dust. There are times that I, in my own mind, I can live in the past, present, and future at the same, not millisecond, but the same moment. You'll notice that many times that I'm dealing with the past, present, and future at the same second. Did you know that? So to me, if I say that's where I should be, it means where I should be, but I can't be. Because I read the great novel by Thomas Wolfe, You Can't Go Home Again. What he meant by that was, is you can't go home again. It's pretty obvious. Yeah, I'd love to go there, but I can't be there. My father's been dead since 1970. My mother's been dead 10 years. They're not sitting on a beach chair waiting for me. And yet someone told me something else now. You want to go into some spiritual stuff? I don't even remember. This was a hot weekend. Somebody told me in the midst of the dog pictures and the Michael pictures for Government Zero, man, am I glad I'm not in television. The makeup and the face and the non-allergenic and let me do the nose and let me do this and the eyes and that. This came out good, but the shirt isn't good. The jacket's bent. Your face doesn't look here. Your eyes are not sparkling. The dog turned his head. His tongue is hanging out. Your tongue is hanging out. You hear it? This went on for hours and hours and hours. Someone told me something else. They said they had a seance with a psychic and they actually saw their mother and father in the next world. Oh, I know, because I was bringing up Kepler 425b, the new planet that was discovered, the, 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 the Earth twin that's 60% bigger, that apparently can support life that's trillions of uh, light years away. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Trillions of miles away, rather, a number of light years away. It's a hard concept, the idea of light years. I remember when I was a high school teacher, I tried to explain it to the students. Many of them got it. Their eyes lit up. You know how you explain what a light year is to a kid sitting in a classroom? Try that someday. It's an interesting one. Somewhere I sit in the sky, way up in the atmosphere, way beyond the atmosphere, way out in the heavens, way out in the darkness of the universe, there's another star that's, let's say, a, one light year away. What does that mean? I said, that means that if a person on that celestial body were looking at you right now in this classroom through a telescope, they could see you with some high-definition telescope, and they focused on this classroom right now, they wouldn't see you for a year. That's how long it would take for the image of you to travel, traverse space, to get there. That's one light year. So now take that and say, wait a minute. So if there's other life on other planets that are, let's say, oh, a thousand light years away, you mean someone's looking down on the Earth and can see what went on a thousand years ago? Now you get the idea of history and eternity. Now you get the idea of the human mind and what it's capable of. Now you get the knowledge that I'm trying to tell you about, which is this, that the human eye is still faster than any camera ever invented through the greatest technology the world has ever seen. The eye can still see things that the camera can't see. Did you know that? The photographer taught me that. I walked him up to a little hillside area that I have uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a fruit grove, fruit uh, orchard. I wanted him to see a little um, area that I have put aside for my pets when they pass the earth. I had cut some trees down in the middle of a redwood grove and I quietly said, here's where they're going to rest. I, you know, that's where they're going to be. I'm not throwing them in a box again with the ashes, this time in the ground. So I said, can you take a picture of this filtering light coming through the trees? It was around six o'clock. He said, no, the camera can't catch it. The camera's not as good as the eye. I said, you're kidding me. No, camera's not as good as the eye. Well, let me tell you something else. The mind is not as bad as Obama thinks it is. The human mind is much better than this demon thinks it is. This human mind, particularly the one you're listening to, speaking to you right now, the, the human mind speaking to you through the airwaves that are vibrating in your ear, in your headphones or on your computer speaker or your iPhone or whatever you're using, this human mind can see what this man is doing. Can't pull the wool over my eyes. Maybe he can fool some of the people. And maybe he can fool all of the people some of the time, but he can't fool this man ever. Ever! And on that note, I will take a quick tea break and be right back.
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. We have a 100,000 motorcycle march on Washington and just say no more to this criminal, corrupt administration. Can't we have a 100,000 motorcycles show up? blasting their engines saying this is the end of the road for you criminals stop it it's our country something you got to know in washington it's always two parties against the people rarely has it ever been anything different it's always two parties against the people in washington dc and i am sick and tired of the gangsters flooding america with illegal aliens flooding america with drugs Flooding America with pollution, flooding America with immorality. I am sick of it. Now, I don't say this very often. I try to control and constrain. But something's got to give. This man is a maniac out of control. I knew he was crazy. I told you he's a madman. I told you he's nuts. I told you he's a psychopath. After getting one victory after another in the Supreme Court, he wants more. Then he hits us with something more. Then he says his one regret so far is he hasn't been able to uh, have gun control. Then he rushes off to Africa and tells him, you stupid people may have a religion and a cultural belief on the gay thing, but you know what? The state trumps all. This is utter utterly unbelievable. This is a week after giving Iran uh, the direct pathway to the bomb. What if there were 100,000 motorcycles showed up in Washington, D.C., blasting their engines, just saying no more, no more, no more? No more, no more, no more. We've got to scare them. There's no, nothing else they will respond to. You see, they fear the people and they hate you. They treat you like nothing, garbage. You're, you're flotsam to them. You're cannon fodder. You're nothing but cannon fodder. Look that one up. Phrase from, I think, an earlier war, cannon fodder. That's what you are to them. But never before in history, the history of any nation, has the demographics of a nation been changed like this, except... After a war, when the country was conquered and the conquering armies invaded the nation and peopled the nation with their children, that's when the demographics changed as rapidly as what Obama's doing. But since we haven't lost a war, or have we, he's peopling this nation with those from other nations. You notice there are almost no European immigrants being brought in by this um, balanced and fair administration? Why is he not bringing any people from Europe? Many of them want to come here. There are no jobs in Italy, no jobs in Sicily. Why are there almost no visas for young Sicilian men? Plenty from Africa, plenty from Muslim countries, plenty from South America, Central America, you name it, China. But Europeans need not apply. I'll let you figure it out. Oh, by the way, for those of you who are interested, Donald Trump will be on this show live this week. I'm not going to tell you exactly when because it's going to happen. Don't know exactly when. Stay tuned every day, and you'll find that Donald Trump will probably say things this week he didn't say last week. I'll ask him about certain things, and we'll see what he has to say. Go, Donald, go. Go, Donald, go. Now, of course, there's another thing I haven't gotten to yet, which is Huckabee said something great over the weekend. He sent a tweet out saying that the Obama deal with Iran is bringing the Jews right to the doors of the ovens. I said, hey, good for you, Huckabee. Good for you, man. You finally said it like it is, unlike the others in your party who say nothing except Trump. Wait until you see the things in response that was said by these demons. You should hear what they said to Huckabee. And of course, the ADL had to jump in on it too. That the esteemed organization, the Anti-Defamation League, Oh, yeah. I wonder what they really stand for, the ADL. They were not there when I needed them. They're a useless, self-serving organization. So they jumped on Huckabee for saying it. So which side is the ADL on? They're certainly not on the side of the Jewish people. They're on the side of the ADL, feathering their own nests, stuffing their own wine glass, in my opinion. If you like the first hour, I'm just warming up. I'll be here another two, God willing. Be here, be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282.
Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Welcome to our number two of The Savage Nation. The rock and roll music, of course, harkens back to a time in America, a different time, uh, when the chrome was thick and the women were straight. And for many of us, those were better times than today where the world, uh, the earth is an upheaval. The world is an upheaval, social upheaval. This is our two of the Savage Symphony today, and as in all symphonies, the tempo changes. It's a symphony in three pieces. Our one is one tempo, <clears throat> our two is another tempo, our three is another tempo. That's how symphonies are uh, written. If you listen to any of them, they're not consistent. If you wanna hear the same tempo for three straight hours about Democrat bad, Republicans are bad too. And I have no solution whatsoever, but I hate that. I hate Boehner and I hate McConnell. And, and Obama's no good, nothing's good, nothing, everything bad, oh, for three hours. You are listening to the wrong station. Just remember this, in Washington, it's always two parties against the people. Never forget that. That'll help you understand why your society is in upheaval right now. Now, over the weekend, a lot of things happened. Mike Huckabee, who I'm not a huge fan of, I think he's, he's a lightweight, but he said something that I thought was true. I mean, we know that Obama gave Iran uh, a, a pathway to the nuclear bomb. Talk about a pathway to citizenship. He gave him a pathway. Not only that, but it'll protect them from Israel bombing their nuclear facilities. You hear this? In the deal, a side deal. Who was that little, that little, that little monster that was with Kerry all the time with the long hair? I don't know who he was. Some little gnome-like guy kept appearing with long hair hanging down over his head. Who was that? Whatever. He signed the deal. Then the communist woman did the deal. The one who sold us out during the Carter administration. She's still there doing it. You know, these left-wingers never leave. Old left-wingers never die. They just lose their direction. So over the week, a lot of stuff happened. Um, Huckabee says that the deal with Iran is leading the Jewish people to the ovens. Well, there he's stepping it. Now, the professional defenders of the Jewish people, those who do it for a living, such as the Adele attack, talk to me, well, he owes us a, an apology. No, A.B., he doesn't owe me an apology. Maybe he owes you an apology because you lick Obama's boots, Abe Foxman. You're a bootlicker. You've always been a bootlicker of the power structure. He doesn't owe me an apology, A.B., now, not to be outdone is Wasserman, Wasserman Schultz. Debbie Wasserkaria Schultz jumps in and says, Huckabee owes the Jewish and American people an apology. No, he doesn't. You owe us an apology for even appearing on the public stage. You've set the world back a number of decades. Then, of course, Obama attacked uh, Huckabee. Shows you he really got to them. And Hillary. In clip 14 attack talk could be listen to this one listen to 14 here's your here's your girl Hillary I am I'm disappointed and I'm really offended personally uh, I know Governor Huckabee I have a cordial relationship with him he served as the governor of Arkansas Sir. but I find this kind of um, inflammatory rhetoric totally unacceptable you mean only your inflammatory rhetoric is acceptable attacking the tea party attacking the american people attacking gun owners that inflammatory rhetoric is fine you know but she's going nowhere fast she's on the her she's the zeppelin of our times hillary clinton's campaign is the zeppelin of the 1930s it's actually on fire and it's hitting it's aiming to the earth right now i know a liberal who said they hate her liberals hate hillary did you know that's the, the dirty little secret they hate her. They said, A, she's nobody, and be a criminal. That's what people say about her. So for her to say, oh, she's against Huckabee now. Why? Well, she's so against. Then Obama attacked Huckabee. The best thing on the weekend really was uh, the Jackie Mason stuff. We don't have the tuna fish remark, do we? It's a little hard to hear, but I'm not going to play it right now, where he says that in New York, uh, the tuna fish remark is the best. I can't even find it. 
For, it was in the Jerusalem Post. Great, great. He had an interview with uh, Aaron Klein. I haven't heard from Aaron in a while. Jackie Mason says the New York City restaurants are subject to a tougher inspections than the Iran than Iran is under the nuclear deal. <laughs> Leave it to an old Borscht Belt comedian. New York City restaurants are subject to tougher inspections than Iran under a nu- the nuclear deal. He, <laughs> he said we're better protected in this city from a bad tuna fish. <laughs> Then a bomb from Iran under Obama. You know, humor cuts across all ethnicities, by the way. Then I talked about the Shemitah. To those of you in the garment center, it's Shemata. But Shemitah means the Sabbath year. And I read to you what happened in previous ends of Sabbath years on the beginning of the Jewish New Year's. And it doesn't look too good for us for September 13th, 2015, the day before the Jewish New Year. Oh, ooh. what happened before that? 2011, September 11th, 201 planes flown into the World Trade Center Tower, September 11th. September 28th, 2008, day before Rosh Hashanah, stock market drops 777 points. Uh, bond market collapses in 94. 87, solar eclipse took place September 23rd, the end of a Shemitah year. 30 days later came Black Monday. Greatest percentage crash in Wall Street history. 1931, a solar eclipse took place September 12th, the end of the Shemitah year. Eight days later, England abandons the gold standard, sets off a market crash, bank failures around the world, ushers in the greatest month-long stock market percentage crash in Wall Street history. Pardon me for talking uh, in, in New York fasties. Over the years in radio, I've had to learn how to speak like an American. And I pass for an American, by the way. I've slowed myself down considerably over the years. But if you really get me started, I speak pretty quickly. That was slow compared to where, how I can actually speak. You know, just think about Spanish people. I remember all the Puerto Rican people in New York. They'd speak Spanish. No one could understand them who didn't know Spanish. It's like, wow, they, what is that language? It's so fast. Do you ever listen to English if you don't understand the language, what it sounds like? Every language sounds <coughs> fast when you don't understand the word of it, which is why Obama's bringing as many of them in as he can. They don't speak English. They won't speak English. They never will speak English. Meanwhile, they can pull the wool over their eyes and send them a, a food stamp. Send them a food stamp and give them a, a credit card a government card, they'll vote whatever you want for a thousand years. So, 855 is the phone number. It's the second um, the, the second thing of the symphony, the Savage Symphony today. You know what I want to hear now? I want to get my mind organized. Robert, could you play the syncopated clock? We have that somewhere in the f- food bank, the mind bank. I used to, when I was in the 50s, I used to listen to the early show on re- television. Every day was a ritual for me. Nice light breakfast in the morning of ham and eggs, a jelly donut on the way to school, a light lunch of leftover meatloaf and mashed potatoes. And then I come home to a light dinner of a freshly cooked steak, French fries, and uh, followed by ice cream. And I'd watch the late show, getting fatter by the minute. Didn't kill me. I mean, the truth is, if you were to create a cardiotoxic diet and you wanted to do it to people that you had in a, a closed environment, you wanted to see how fastly you could destroy their how quickly you could destroy their arteries, you would have, you would have given them the young diet, the savage young diet. I don't know. My mother wasn't trying to kill me, but uh, she thought it was good for me to eat fat foods, like fattening foods like that. She was probably right. I'm still alive, but I listened to the. Uh, <clears throat> I was so relaxed watching Walter Cronkite. The weather vane would spin northeast, west, and south, and I re- realized what the news was. News, northeast, west, and south. I watched the news of the world, so I thought, but it wasn't. It was left-wing propaganda. And then, of course, just as I was polishing off the last bowl of ice cream on a cool, cold winter's day, in walked Dad, white in the face from having worked all day in his store, and there was his worst nightmare. His only living son killing himself with a diet for King Farouk in his heyday. And he would go red with horror, like to my mother. What are you doing? You're going to kill a kid. You're spoiling him. What are you feeling? <laughs> and sure enough, my childhood ended soon thereafter, and I was forced to go to work in his store, which I hated on the weekends. Hated it. I hated working on the weekends. You think I wouldn't have rather stayed home and smoke pot in my teenage years and party all day long like the other kids? I hated going to work, but he was doing me a favor. He, I didn't know it then. Oh, yeah, indeed. So here we are in hour two. Lots of things happening. And if you want to chime in on any of these events, 855-47282. Mark your calendars. Donald Trump is on the Savage Nation this week. Just 
when you thought he was down, he comes back up. Just when you thought Savage was down, he pops back up. You know how many times I've come back from the ashes of radio? <laughs> it's, there's got to be something more than me involved in this one. Anyway, in Washington, it's always two parties against the people. Welcome to the show. The market's gone down. We're talking about the Shemata year, the Shemitah. I have not yet gotten to the prophecy of St. Malachi about this false pope and that he's going to be the last pope, according to prophecy. <laughs> you don't know. I was quite surprised to learn this over the weekend. In the prophecy of the popes tri attributed to St. Malachi, an Irish archbishop who was canonized as a saint in 1190, in his prediction, predication, dated 1139, Malachi prophesied that there would be 12 more popes before Judgment Day. Benedict, uh, I'm sorry, there would be 112 more popes before Judgment Day. And Pope Benedict XVI was the 111th pope. And those familiar with the 12th century prophecy claiming the next pope will be the last are into what I'm talking about. <laughs> Some say it's fiction passed off as reality. Curiously, the prophecy of popes stops at the 112th pope and ends with a cryptic warning of doomsday. In the extreme persecution of the Holy Roman Church, there will sit Peter the Roman who will pasture a sheep in many tribulations. And when these things are finished, the city of seven hills will be destroyed and the terrible judge will judge his people. That's sort of what where we're at right now, close to it, according to those who believe in this prophecy. And when you see that the false pope is being brought to America by the false president to speak before the false Congress about something which he knows nothing about, which is, uh, let us say, climate, you realize that there may be something to these prophecies. How else can you take, how else can you figure out that an Argentinian of no background whatsoever, an unknown Argentinian is picked to be the Pope and suddenly he's lecturing the world about global warming and he's the best friend of uh, Barack Obama. You could figure it out, can't you? Okay, let's take a caller on that. Michael on WMAL, in the heart of darkness, Washington, D.C. Go ahead, please. What's on your mind, Michael? Yes, Michael, I just want to make it plain how it is that you find yourself by that microphone. You see there has to be something else at work to put you there. You have an uncanny sensitivity to these spiritual issues, especially about what's happening to the world and, and what threatens its uh, in destruction. And so my think, thinking about you there is, that you're there because you are going to be the one on your national radio program to announce the coming of the Messiah. That said, let's get into... All right, hold, please, we, uh, listen, if you ever want to come on the show again, don't talk about the Messiah on this show. I told you I met with rabbis who know more than you do, and, and these are mystical rabbis higher up in the food chain than you are, and I told them I don't believe in the Jewish Mashiach Messiah nonsense, and I said you misinterpreted that. The true interpretation of that is that there's a Messiah within all of us, and that when we become Messianic within our own self, and all men become Messianic, the world will see the Messiah arise through all men. And he said to me, you're 100% right, the Rebbe taught us that, and most people have forgotten it. So I think you've misinterpreted your own teachings. You're 100% right in what you just said, but that's the topic for another time. What no, I'm you just said I'm 100% right when you just said I was 100% wrong. No. The ultimate war that people are afraid of, especially with this deal with Iran, is not going to happen. And the reason is because just like, uh, let me first say this, that we have a principle in Judaism, which is when there's a dire prophecy, something calamitous that the prophets say will happen, that doesn't have to happen because if the Jewish people repent, then it's, uh, it's overturned and it'll be good for them. In fact, you can see... All right, so, so if all the Jews of New York City repented and they stopped running after women and stopped uh, eating ham and pork and sausage and bacon and eggs, uh, Iran wouldn't get the bomb? We have uh, for a few thousand... All right, look, it doesn't work exactly like that. You know, we're not talking about Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck or, or, or Santa Claus. Hold on, we'll come back and have some fun in the second part of the symphony on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. Look, I don't need a prophecy from the 11th century to tell me that my society is being destroyed from within. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. 
And the headlines themselves tell you the whole story. Sometimes they say a picture is worth a thousand words. And as you well know, a headline is sometimes worth a thousand pages. The headlines say it all. You ready for them? Illegals outnumber unemployed in the U.S. of A. This is on the Drudge Report. He didn't write the articles. He posted them linked from other sources. Immigrant flood turning Virginia Democrat socialist. One-fifth of the nation of El Salvador is living inside the U.S. of A. The MS-13 gang in the land of colonial Williamsburg outgunning the cops. Why is he bringing in death squads? Remember we used to hear about the death squads in South America? Now, of course, they were right-wing death squads, so they were bad death squads. And they killed the communists who were trying to take over, I think it was Nicaragua at the time. The landowners got together death squads and they killed off the commies. That was a bad time. So now we have death squads arriving in America. And what we're supposed to say, it's okay because they're part of the immigrant flood of good immigrants. Are you people insane? You don't understand what's going on in front of your own eyes. But I did hour one on this. I'm not going to do hour two on this. Because you've given up. Many of you say, okay, look, Savage, I'll listen to you, but I can't do anything about it. I voted in these idiots on the Republican side, and they're worse than the Democrats. Well, okay, so we know that. That doesn't mean we stop seeing and we stop talking about it, does it? That we stop talking about it too and become none people? Exactly what they want? That's next. They'll make it illegal to even talk about what they're doing or print about what they're doing or write about what they're doing. Is that what you want? You want to move into that? Oh, why even talk about it? We want to move into a total dictatorship? Because that's where you're going to go unless you keep talking about it and writing about it and blogging about it and Twittering about it, about how Obama and the left-wing <coughs> fascists are purposely destroying America with illegal immigration. Government zero. Government zero. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Similarly, with respect to uh, the rights of, of gays and lesbians, I've been consistent all across Africa on this. Uh -huh. I believe in the principle of treating people equally under the law and that they are deserving do. of equal protection under the law we all do. and that the state should not discriminate against people based on their sexual orientation. Oh, and right. I say that recognizing that there may be people who have different religious or cultural beliefs, mm -hmm. but, yeah, but the issue it. is how does the state operate relative mm. to people? Yeah, the state, state. Gee, state, statist, state, state, national socialism. That's the state. The ultimate state was national socialism. Or the Bolsheviks created the perfect state, the USSR. That was the state. And they said to religion be damned and culture be damned, society be damned. The state matters! Only the state! See, if someone spoke like that, you wouldn't listen to him. You'd say he's a nut, a right-wing nut. But when he speaks with forked tongue and smoothly, and nicely, he's a nice man. Nice wife, nice daughters. He can't be mean. He's not a mean guy. Well, you could fool some of the morons some of the time, and you can fool some of the morons all of the time, but you can't fool all of the morons all of the time, Mr. O. Comedian, revered comedian, actually the fabled comedian, the famous comedian, the ex-famous comedian, the once famous, the brilliant comedian, Jackie Mason was on uh, ABC over the weekend with Aaron Klein, and he had some funny things to say. This sounds a little hard to hear, but let's play clip 10 on Jackie Mason on Iran under the nuclear deal. This uh, Secretary of State Kerry negotiated with them for a year and a half to accomplish nothing. He should give us the money back for all the trips he made. <laughs> he, he cost us billions of dollars in airplane fares, and he came back with nothing except a bad foot. <laughs> Okay, next, please. First, Obama said we could expect them any time, any place, whenever we please. Mm. Now it turns out, whenever we please, except when they don't allow it. If they, if, if they don't want it, it's up to them. So then we have to wait 28 days to inspect, as if to say for the 28 days, we could trust them completely because they'll do nothing. They'll hold the bomb in front of us, waiting for us to come so they <laughs> can show it to us. <laughs> that's, how, that's how stupid this whole negotiation is. 
Next, next. The real agreement he made, I'm sure, is he said to them, listen, could you keep the bomb quiet for a year and a half? Because if you don't bomb us for a year and a half, I'll be the big winner. Everybody will say I made a fantastic agreement. <laughs> and if we bomb us after I leave, I could always say it's the other guy's fault. Needless to say, Jackie Mason is not a fan of uh, Barack Obama. Uh, that's, that's all. That we know. Anyway, a little comic relief. Here's a story to make you sick and angry. What the heck? It's a nice day for that. Man allegedly paid $55,000 to skin and behead a famed African lion. He was in a reserve in Zimbabwe. Months after Wangi National Park in Zimbabwe came into fire for exporting 23 elephant calves to China. Wonderful people in China. Very sensitive. The park is again mired in controversy. This time after a Spanish hunter skinned and beheaded Africa's most famous lion, 13-year-old Cecil. The poor lion was wearing a GPS tracker, and authorities, some authorities in Zimbabwe, a madhouse, extrodesia, a madhouse. You know what local rule brought, don't you? Rape, murder, kidnapping, decimation of the crops. The lion was wearing a GPS tracker, and authorities said he was tricked into leaving the park, shot with a bow and arrow, tracked for 40 hours as he was dying, and killed with a rifle outside the park on private land. I think the hunter should be found stripped naked and released into the wild and let hunters chase him with bows and arrows and be told not to kill him. Just shoot him in the arms and legs and keep, let him keep running. The Zimbabwe Pres Professional Hunters and Guides Association has confirmed on Facebook that the professional hunter on the hunting permit was one of its members. Real, oh, really? Well, now you can go to the club. Conservation is now worried that as many as a dozen lion cubs are vulnerable to infanticide as other males close in on the two prides led by Cecil and Jericho, a male with whom he was in coalition. Can you believe this? There are six lionesses in the prides, and Jericho, as a single male, will be unable to defend the two prides and cubs from new males that invade the territory. Very clear in the animal world. They don't have welfare. A conservationist in Spain says this. We're ashamed that in Spain there are rich madmen who pay for the pleasure of killing wild animals such as lions. Let's see, what's this? A Game of Thrones editor recently killed by a lioness in South Africa was raising money to combat poaching. Oh, really? That's amazing. This article originally appeared on Newser. Man may have paid 55000 to kill Africa's most famous lion. The world's dying right in front of our eyes. Everything good about it is being killed off by the most despicable homicidal species God has ever made called humankind. Uh, now I'm going to get depressed and angry. Where do I go from here? How do I save this show? How do I pull it out of the hat? What do I do right now? Where do I go? What do I do? How do I save it? It's always two parties against the people. Well, Obama chiding Huckabee and other Republicans would be a laugh because that sort of goes along with the killing of the lion. The lion of Judah is Israel. And Obama is the hunter that wants to kill off the Lion of Judah. So Huckabee says that giving Iran the bomb, which is what Obama did, and Kerry, the backstabbing Kerry, ketchup Kerry, is uh, leading the Jews to the doors of the gas chamber. Well, Obama didn't like that. Listen to clip 13 from Obama, the, the Lion Hunter, in 13. You know, the particular comments of, uh, of Mr. Huckabee are... Mr. Huckabee. I think part of just a general pattern that we've seen that uh, is uh, would be yeah considered uh, yeah, he ridiculous got if it weren't yeah, so sad. I mean, so true. I mean, we've had a sitting senator called John Kerry Pontius Pilate. Right on. We've had a sitting senator who also happens to be running for president uh, suggest that I'm the leading state sponsor of terrorism. Right on. These are... Leaders in the Republican Party. Right on. In fact, the president of, of uh, Kenya chided the president, saying he's actually supporting Boko, uh, excuse me, the uh, Islamists by not helping Kenya fight the Islamists. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. Didn't make it to the news, did it? His good friend in Kenya said that you're actually helping the Islamists overthrow me. What does Obama talk about that? The great hunter with the bow and arrow, hunting the Lion of Judah. It's not a bad metaphor. I think it's a good metaphor. 
Oh, man. If there's ever another world, do I hope this hunter is thrown naked to be hunted down by lions who tear him apart? You know, someone told me, I was doing a dog book over the weekend, taking the pictures, the photographer and all that. I told you about that. Yeah, a lot of poses with me and Teddy in the car, in the restaurant, in the this, in the that. And I said to the photographer, Vincent, I said, hey, Vincent, you know what, um, where is that? John, John Steinbeck wrote that <clears throat> in the next world, our pets uh, are the people and we become their pets and they treat us the way we treated them on this earth. I never, no, most people never heard that one. I know a lot of these things. I have a wide esoteric knowledge of literature. I like that one. So every time I get mad at Teddy, I say, oh, oh, don't raise your voice, that little guy. He's liable to scream at you in the next world. Michael, go get me. Oh, I'm sorry. Michael, will you please get me your collar so we can go on a walk? Sure, Teddy. Be glad to do that. Michael, why are you dripping water all over the floor when I put down your water? Oh, I mean, uh, Michael, can you please not dribble the water on the floor, the wooden floor, after I give you fresh water? Sure, Teddy. Absolutely. Michael, why do you only eat the chicken and leave over the, the, the gibble, the kibble? Now, kibble, I got to throw out every... I mean... Don't you like some of that kibble with the chicken I give you, Michael? All right, I'll try it. That kind of thing. <laughs> you, got, you got to live past, present, and future to survive this world. I'll tell you that. You got to have an imagination. Come on, callers. Get, give me some good callers out there. I always get like the barrel, the same pickle barrel. The same dill from the bottle, bottom of the pickle barrel calls every day. That's what you hear in talk radio, the dill. I want some pickle, not some dill. Can we get some pickles calling instead of some dill? Well, it's summertime. People are away. It's summertime and the living is easy. That's what it is. That's what it is. The poor animals. Suffer thee the little animals. Suffer thee the little animals from the most homicidal creature God ever made mankind. Killing a lion like that. Killing elephants. Killing gorillas. Cutting off mountain gorillas' hands. Killing elephants for their ivory so those devils in China can show them off in their ugly little apartments like the bourgeoisie of America in the 50s. Unbelievable to me. <laughs> Look at the ivory I have. Look what I got. <laughs> you want some dog for appetizer? <laughs> Don't you love the sacred nature of the third world? See, the liberals go into a Chinese restaurant. They think they're going into a religious service. They bow in Chinese restaurants and they do it to this day. They put their hands together when they ask for a, bot, a, a, a napkin. Oh, miss, may I have a napkin? The waiter looks like they're insane. What are they bowing for? What do they think, it's 13th century uh, China? Oh, thank you when they pay. Don't you love liberals paying in the third world restaurants, how they thank the owner f for taking their money? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. All of them bow and scrape. The third world is no wonder they crap on us. They see what weakling morons we are. What are you thanking him for? He has a business to run. You should be, he should be thanking you for, for, for eating there, idiot. Everything is upside down. Oh, thank you. Can I have a napkin? Oh, thank you. Can I have a glass of water? Thank you. Okay, so that's where I went. Prophecy of St. Malachi didn't get to that. That didn't play. The Shamata thing didn't play. Jackie Mason didn't play. Huckabee didn't play. Obama didn't play. Nothing. Nothing. Zero. It's like zero Monday. No, no, I, I can't play Michelle. I mean, I have my limits. That's one voice that cuts through me like a glass, like chalk on a blackboard every time she speaks. And secondly, I just ate a, turk, a chicken leg. I can't. I'll get sick. Uh, here's a good one for you. I think this might entertain my audience. On the Savage Nation. In Kenya now, remember, in Kenya, in Kenya, Kenya. Kenya, 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 Kenya. Oh. He talks about the Confederate flag in Kenya to steam up black Africans against the white man. This man is a monster. He's a demon. Why is he going to Africa to make them hate Americans who are white? And if he's not doing that, I will correct myself. You listen to clip 22. This is your president, not mine going to Africa, lecturing them on gay rights. Now he's lecturing them on the Confederate flag. Listen to clip 23, 22, how smooth he is. See, if he screamed like Serm uh, Austrian did in the 30s, you wouldn't listen to him. He would still be a community organizer. 
if he was one of the idiots who scream on a soapbox. But they've all learned how to cool it. Al Sharpton went on a diet, got rid of that dirty sweatsuit. Look where he is. Cleaned up his act. Took the, the slim fast, got rid of that filthy pink sweatsuit, cut the hair back. Look where he is today, in and out of the White House a hundred times. And he doesn't scream anymore. Look at this one. Obama. Listen, listen to how the fork tongue whispers in 22. Every country and every culture has traditions that are unique and help make that country what it is. But just because something is a part of your past, don't make it right. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that a nasty it defines your future. No, that nasty constitution. Now look at the, us in the United States. Recently, we've been having a debate about uh, the Confederate flag. Ooh. This was a symbol for those states who fought against the Union to preserve slavery. That's not now, true. That's a lie. As a piece of, as a historical artifact, it's no, important. Let's stop right there. First of all, that's but a big some lie. Some have argued. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. That's a lie. Because if you read Lincoln's own writings and his own speeches in the beginning of the Civil War, it had nothing to do with slavery. I've read that for you on the air over and over again. It was about preserving the Union and preventing secession from the Union. And he even said that he would keep slavery if he could keep the Union together. His speeches changed toward the middle and later part of the Civil War, where he changed it to be about slavery. But again, the president is a known liar. So, Can you pick it up from there? Or you have to start from the beginning. I'll get a neck ache if you have to start from the... No, if you have to start from the beginning, the neck will go out again. I can't take it. I already have a half a migraine starting because the first part of the symphony today, I ran so hot, I over, I overamped. I did. It's Monday. I don't know what I'm getting so excited about. Monday, normal person would be at the beach today. I see cars in my neighborhood. They're like packing for the beaches. I'm, I'm jealous. My day job on the radio is like prevents me from enjoying my life, except I enjoy this more than the rest of my life. That's the, that's the conundrum. These three hours on radio, I mean, I like fly like an eagle. I mean, I want to lay on the beach. That's exciting. It, it seems good. That's the thing about vacations. It looks good. Like the sta the back of the van is packed with the blanket and the, the bucket and the ice and the thing and the, and the cooler and the chair and the umbrella. And I want to be there. I want to go there. But there's nowhere to go. A, I hate the sun. B, I hate the sand. C, I hate sitting like a, a, a clam doing nothing. So I'm right where I want to be. I hope you're back uh, here when I'm back here. Be here. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. Always remember this. It's always two parties against the people in this country, almost all the way back to the founding. It's always been two parties against the people. And something I have said to you over and over again is that when you see the Democrats and Republicans agreeing on something, you can bet on one thing, which is that the people are being screwed. So right now they're agreeing on flooding America with illegal aliens, flooding America with death squads like the MS-13 street gang, and you have to say, how can they be getting away with it? So someone sends me an email, listen to this. United States classifies MS-13 street gang a global criminal organization. And the emailer says, this is from 2012. But it says Obama decided to classify the gang as an international crime organization. And in so doing, made it easier for ICE and the U.S. government to seize the revenues of drug smuggling, sex trafficking, and their other criminal activity. So now you understand why Obama wants MS-13 in America. They make a lot of money for him and his government. In other words, they're his gang. They can take their money. So the money goes into the hands of this monstrous government. That's why they won't deport them. That's why they bring in more of them. To make money for them. You never saw that, did you? Well, you just saw it, didn't you? Enjoy the insight. Take and run with it. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, 
psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. I think that we have a situation where many minority communities for so long have felt that law enforcement was coming in to essentially enforce laws against them, not to protect them. Hard work is at the core of everything. And if it's too easy, then you're probably not working hard enough, you know? Um, I am where I am, Barack is where he is, because let me tell you, the, this president works hard. I'm, I'm you know, he oh, works you know. Oh, hard. Yeah. He does. He works all the time. He is he always does. reading. He is always oh, writing. Yeah. He is never What's off. What's he reading, though? You know, What's he writing? You're not, su success is not easy. So really? you gotta embrace that reality. You cannot let these left-wing maniacs get to you. You gotta fight them tooth and nail. She says it's hard work, then give it back to them. Give it back to them by working hard against them. Here's Loretta Lynch, the new attorney general, who's Al Sharpton in a skirt, saying that minority communities feel that law enforcement is coming in to essentially enforce laws against them. Tell that! to the latest victims of rape in Central Park. Tell that to the victims all over America who don't believe a word of what you're saying. Again, everything is upside down in Barack's America and in Barack's world. Not bad enough what he did to this country, what he's doing to Israel. Not bad enough what he tried to do to Egypt. Not bad enough what he's doing in the Middle East. Now he has to go and meddle in Africa and try to screw up Africa. Yeah, he works very hard. Very hard. Now that he's finished his work for now, taking a summer break before the visit to Martha's Vineyard with the 0001%, all the white people with billions, so he can talk about how our minorities are oppressed in America <laughs> while licking his ice cream cones on the streets of Martha's Vineyard and tell us how bad, how bad white America is to minorities and how bad America is to the world and that we owe the world an apology licking on that ice cream cone with all the hedge fund gangsters he can find. <laughs> Unbelievable to me. Yeah, you can fool some of the morons some of the time, and you can fool some of the morons all of the time, but you cannot fool Michael Savage any of the time. One man's opinion. One man's opinion. 855-4072-82 is the phone number. MichaelSavage.com is the website. Mass immigration turning Virginia from a conservative state to a state of El Salvador. U.S. troop withdrawal let the Islamic State enter Iraq, says mil say military leaders. GOP senators lead push to allow states to impose an internet sales tax. You heard me right. Republicans are leading efforts to pass legislation that will allow the states to impose a sales tax on online transactions. It's the Republicans. Michelle says Barack works all the time. He is never off. I mean, while he's golfing? He's not off when he's golfing? How's that possible? Well, I guess, you know, you can tell a big one all the time. If you care to comment on any of the comments I made for the last two hours, the phone number is 855 We talked about a lot of things, and I can't summarize or review all of them. For those of you who joined class, the classroom late today, you'll just have to catch up on the Internet. Let's take the first caller of this hour on the Savage Nation. Yeah, well, I have to set it up. Huckabee said that Obama is giving Iran a nuclear bomb, which is what he's done, is leading the Jews to the, to the doors of the gas chamber. It's a strong statement, but he got the attention of Obama. It was such a strong statement and so true that Obama stumbled over it while speaking in Kenya. He stumbled over it. He got upset. He attacked Huckabee from Africa. It must be that he got to him. Listen to clip 13. It shows you how strong Huckabee's comment was that Obama stumbled on it in Africa. Listen to 13. You know, the particular comments of, uh, of Mr. Huckabee are, I think, part of just a general pattern that we've seen that uh, is, uh, would What's be the pausing? considered uh, ridiculous the pausing? if it weren't so sad. You mean true? We've had it wasn't so true. a sitting senator called John Kerry Pontius Pilate. Correct. We've had a right sitting senator who also happens to be running for president 
suggest that I'm the leading state sponsor of terrorism. Right on. These are leaders in the Republican Party. No, they should be the leaders of the Republican Party. They're leaders of the Tea Party. No, the leaders of the Republican Party are geldings. They're your little geldings. Boehner and McConnell, they're your geldings. No, these are the real, these should be the leaders of the Republican Party, along with Donald Trump as the presidential candidate. Not the geldings, the sellouts. That's all, move along, nothing to see here. Nothing to see here, it's a, a summer, that's all. Don't pay any attention. Don't pay any attention to what the right-wingers have to say. Only listen to the communists who you consider to be moderates. That's all. Just listen to the commies leading you to your death. So Planned Parenthood, that's another big issue. Hmm. That's interesting. So you had a group go undercover and show that they're selling baby body parts for a profit. And now the Attorney General of the State of California is going to investigate the journalists who discover they're selling body parts instead of investigating the Hitlerites in planned, uh, planned infanticide. Isn't that interesting how it works when you have power? When you have power and you're corrupt, you can do anything. Anything. You can build internment camps. You can falsely accuse people. You can tax them to death. Or like Cecil the lion, you can shoot them with a bow and arrow, meaning the bow and arrow of lies. 855-407-282. John on KKOH Radio in Reno, Nevada. Welcome from that fair little big city up there underneath the Sierra Nevada mountains. John, what's on your mind tonight? Well, uh, quite honestly, Michael, thank you for taking the call. And I just wanted to say to you that uh, as an as a, uh, American, true and true, I am so angry at our, our political system and the media that is basically the Gestapo, if you would, of today's um, uh, political arena. They are, they are piranhas. They are basically sent out to destroy anyone that speaks for America. And I am so thankful to still have you on the air after 20-some years of listening to you. I grew up with Let me tell you something. It's a miracle. It's, it's God's hands that I'm still on the air. Remember what happened to me. Over the years, I'm not trying to act like a martyr. I've been very fortunate. I thank God for everything I have. Remember what happened when I spoke out about illegal aliens when I was on another station in San Francisco. The dreamer mobs came outside the studio with picket signs trying to get me thrown off the air. Did you know that? Do you know what they did to me in England by lying about me? I'm not allowed to enter England. I'm the only member of the American media unable to enter the fair nation of England, the land of the Magna Carta, because they lied about what I said. I was a prophet, by the way, in what I said about a nuclear bomb in the hands of Muslim fanatics. And so I know what a smear can do. They're almost impossible to overcome, incidentally. And, you know, that's the thing I have to say about our uh, Donald Trump as a, as a con candidate. I, I truly hope that he can stay and will stay and, and stay in his position because he is one person who has enough money that he cannot be bought. Um, like him or not, he's, I mean, I'm not looking for perfection. I'm just looking for somebody who, who has the heart to lead America. And if you don't believe in what he's saying, then, you know, that's why they're so angry because they're, they're anything but Americans. And they want so. I agree. He's getting to them. He's the only one who's there to challenge the status quo. He will be on this show, by the way, this week, uh, possibly on Wednesday. I'll have to tell everyone tomorrow for sure, but it could be tomorrow. It could be Wednesday, Thursday. But Donald Trump will be on this program, and we will ask him some very important questions. Many of us say, "Would you stay the course?" There's a long way to go. It's over a year to the election. Yes, a long, long way. You know what the thing is? Is if we can if we can get him to stay and hold true we can vote for him and if we can vote for him if he's willing to do what he says and it gets that's the only thing we just have a promise we we can't guarantee anyone's success but you know what was it uh, back a few years ago when everybody voted for republicans thinking that they were going to do something and you know the lady lazy SOBs have gotten elected young and old alike and uh, every one of them has been overwhelmed or Maybe they just never had any, any intent. Well, no. Take a guy like Senator Cotton, a war hero. Look what the Republicans did to him. What about that black lady from Salt Lake City who is a Republican? Have you heard from her since she was elected? Not one word has been allowed to come out of her mouth because of the monsters running the Republican uh, criminal organization. Well, and the media, the media again, these piranhas, uh, if they don't like you, if you speak out of turn, if Big Brother doesn't like you, Guess what? They send you on, uh, on uh, you know, uh, these guys after you. Uh, well, you they do something. Wor they do something worse than smear you, which is they ignore you the way the Soviet Union did to dissidents. Have you noticed that I'm the only talk show host, national host, who's never been on Fox News? 
<laughs> no, I want you to think about that. Roger Ailes and Rupert Murdoch, along with Bill O'Reilly and the others, have banned me from Fox News. Now, how is that possible? I could bring them a huge audience just by appearing. Anytime I would appear, their ratings would spike. So even Blondie, Martha Washington won't have me on. She'll have unknown talk shows on why. Because they're treating me the way the Soviet used to treat, the Soviets used to treat dissidents. So don't think Fox News is different than the rest of them. They do a very good job. I watch Fox News. They're on the right side of things. But they're practicing the same form of uh, attacks upon those they disagree with. And the main reason they despise me on Fox News is because they support illegal immigration. Have you noticed how weak they are in illegal immigration? That's one of Rupert Murdoch's edicts to his marionettes, which is we are in favor of immigration. What? You will not talk against immigration. We are in favor of Muslims. You will not talk against Islamism on this network. And by and large, that holds about 98% true, which is why I, Michael Savage, am banned by the Soviets who run uh, the, the, the Fox News uh, uh, government. May I ask you something here? Is it You seem to be able to speak the truth consistently, day in and day out, year in, year and out. And yet, uh, just like I would uh, com com uh, compare you to Trump and the fact that you're willing to speak the truth, yet you're willing to stand up for the morals and the, and the, and the uh, beliefs that we believe in, whether right or wrong, and you're willing to have a, a conversation and debate somebody. And I, what I don't like is that these other people, if they don't like you, they won't even discuss it for fear of being shown, uh, of being incorrect. You're willing to go to, you know, go to the mat and, and wrestle with somebody over a, a, an idea. What can I say? I don't want to blow my own horn more than I've already done so today and for the last 21 years. But if I'm not going to blow my own horn for me, who will is the question. This is the only chance I get to express myself and defend myself. And so I use it to the fullest extent of my abilities to do so. And I want to thank you for taking the time to listen from Reno. How's the weather up there today? Hot? Uh, it's a beautiful day today. Very, very nice. When is the uh, Reno Air Show? Don't, isn't there a wonderful air show up in, in Reno? September, as I, as I recall. I want to go up there for the air show. Uh, there's one up in the, uh, there's a Reno air show. There's a great air show up in Tahoe, I think, at the Tahoe airport that they used to have every year. I, I want to get up to it this year. I want to go to a car show this summer. God, the summer's half over. Man, let, stay in the line. I'm sending you, I have 12 new copies of Countdown to Mecca, my great novel. I'm sending you one of the 12 that I remain to uh, give away as a complimentary gift for those who call the show with good calls. It's, it's summer is half over already. It's hard to believe. I don't know how it happened. I mean, tomatoes are starting, you know, planted them in February. It's already, I'm gathering them. Nothing like a fresh tomato in my side yard here by the water. And uh, you could see already when the tomato leaves start to turn. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, you know, I, I watch these things. And incidentally, as a, a boater, even though I don't boat currently, I boated for so many years, 20 years. Do you know that the San Francisco Bay has not risen by so much as a millimeter in my entire lifetime of boating? Despite what the Pope says about it. I know the ice caps are melting. I know the polar bears are crying. I know Al Gore is racing to the bank with all of the billions he's raking in under the scam. Not one centimeter has the bay risen from melting ice caps. Not one. No matter what Kepler 425 has done to us, the bay has not risen one centimeter. The tides are identical. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. It is the Savage Nation. Welcome back to the program. And I see that there's a new outrage from another tweet. Outrage after Professor tweets, the U.S. is more brutal than ISIS. That's from some lowlife at Rutgers University. She teaches journalism and media studies. <laughs> I mean, there's no such thing as journalism. You know, those who can are journalists and those who can't teach it. Journalism. And what's her name? Deepa Kumar. She tweets that the U.S. is more brutal than ISIS. And I say, what's with the outrage over tweets to begin with? Tweets are the electronic equivalents of scrolls on bathhouse walls. Do I pay attention to what someone scrolls inside a stall and go running to the uh, thought police? Oh, I was in a bathroom in a restaurant and someone scrolled this terrible thing. That's what a tweet is. Who pays attention to what idiots tweet? It's idiots who have no power whatsoever tweet. Anyway, that's one man's opinion. Welcome back to the program. Tomorrow, 
I just asked Robert to pull a treat since it's summer. And boy, it's summer slipping away fast. I need a vacation, but I'm not going to take it. Wherever I go, I have a studio anyway, so I'm going to broadcast from wherever I go. If I go to L.A., I'll broadcast from a studio that Cumulus owns down there. If I go to Florida, I have a home studio. If I go to New York, I'll go to WABC. I'm like Barack Obama. I work very hard. I even work while I'm on vacation. He doesn't. What is she talking about? He works hard while he's golfing. He's still working. Yeah, I guess. I guess so. I guess that's the way it works. Eight five five four seven two eight two. There's no breaking news. Nothing. Nothing. He's there telling Africa now how to be how to be better Africans. And as an example, he's uh, attacking the Southerners for the uh, Confederate flag. Meanwhile, the truth is, one fifth the nation of El Salvador is living inside the U.S. of A. Obama's flooded us with death death squads. MS-13 gang, would you call them a death squad? Am I wrong about that? Don't pull a Trump on me. If you're bringing people in and they're a member of a gang that's a killer gang that have machine guns, what would you call them? Not what you call them? Love squads? Don't pull a Trump on me and don't tell me all immigrants come here to work. They're all maids and working in chicken plants. You know what percentage of them are on welfare compared to the, the nativist population? Much higher. Much higher, despite what the gangsters in the immigration racket will tell you. And by the way, follow the money. I told you earlier, this has nothing to do with compassion. It has to do with billions and trillions of dollars that are being raked in billions a year and trillions over 10 years that are being raked in by fake church groups, front groups calling themselves church groups that house, feed, and care for them, transport them, give them food. They're treating them better than your grandfather was treated after a lifetime of work, better than my grandfather, and they're making billions of dollars a year. It's all a criminal enterprise. It's like immigrant smuggling. Well, immigrant care in America is a bigger racket than immigrant smuggling, and the gang doing it is right in front of your nose. The Republicrats are doing it. That's the gang making the billions off the immigrant flood that is swamping the good ship America. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282, SAVAGE. Similarly, with respect to uh, the rights of, of gays and lesbians, I've been consistent all across Africa on this. I believe in the principle of treating people equally under the law and that they are deserving of equal protection under the law and that the state should not discriminate against people based on their sexual orientation. And I say that recognizing that there may be people who have different religious or cultural beliefs, but the issue is how does the state operate relative to people? Nazism. Write it down. Did you hear what that man just said? Oh, you may have different religious or cultural beliefs here in Africa amongst you idiots. You throwbacks. But the issue was, how does the state operate relative to people? See, if he screamed it like Hitler, you'd say he's a bad man. But he speaks with a forked tongue so smoothly. It almost sounds reasonable. But if you analyze what he just said, he just said the state trumps religion, the state trumps culture, the state trumps the will of the people, drop dead, which is how we can flood America with more immigrants than the country can ever, ever take in. Illegals now outnumber the unemployed in the United States of America, according to the latest article posted on the Drudge Report. The illegals now outnumber the unemployed in the USA. Immigrant flood turning Virginia blue. One-fifth the nation of El Salvador living inside the USA. MS-13 gang in the land of Colonial Williamsburg. More green cards issued in the year than in the entire population of the original 13 colonies. And you're telling me they all come here to work? Are you people insane? Are you people insane? Now he's in Kenya. It's not bad enough what he did here. Now he's telling them, throw away your culture, throw away your religion, and the state trumps all. The state. What does that mean, the state trumps all? You realize how dangerous that is? To say the state trumps religion, the state trumps culture, the state trumps all? What if you get a fascist dictatorship? How, what if you get a fascist dictatorship? Excuse me, what if? What if? See, but he doesn't scream, he doesn't yell, it's not German music in the background, there's no armbands, there's no Horst Vessel song, but what he's saying is as repugnant as the speeches of the man we are referring to. 
not with regard to gays necessarily. I am taking umbrage with his statement when he says that there may be people who have different religious or cultural beliefs, but the issue is how does the state operate relative to the people, meaning the state trumps all. You get it? Just as the church was destroyed in the Russia after the in Russia after the Bolshevik Revolution, many of you don't know that, but the church was not fascistic. The Christian church was destroyed by the communists in Russia after the revolution. The same way Obama has compromised the churches and synagogues in this country by buying them off on this immigrant care. That's a full sentence. Don't cut me off like Trump. Obama and his left-wing criminal minions are doing this on purpose. They're changing the demographics to change the voting patterns of any state that still votes Republican. Now, whether or not you like Republicans is irrelevant. This criminal administration is eliminating a two-party system. This criminal administration is creating a one-party system. This criminal administration is mimicking what Jerry Brown and his gang did in California, where there is now a single party, no checks, no balances, an out-of-control state with a, by the way, high-speed rail to nowhere, which is, I find ironic, because if you think it's about being nice to the immigrants, you're crazy. It's about stealing billions of dollars a year in revenue under the guise of immigrant favoritism. I was reading that in Italy, the mafia is making a fortune on the illegals coming in from Africa. I said, oh, it's always, it's always criminals making money on something. I said, well, how are they making a fortune on the immigrants flooding into Italy? Well, the same way that, I'll name a few groups, Baptist Family Services, Jewish Family Services, Catholic Family Services are making new fortunes, the new gold mines in housing, feeding, and caring for the illegal aliens from Central America. What do you think, it's free? You're paying for it. You're paying for this. That's the secret. It's all criminals behind it all, whether it's the criminal state or actual criminal organizations, and I don't care if they disguise themselves as a religion. Take a look at the salaries they pay themselves. See how many of their relatives have been hired in these wonderful Christian family service organizations. It's all about the money. Eh, I don't think that'll happen here. No, not there, not there. I, I don't think it'll happen here. Not at all. No, not at all. It can't happen here, can it? Could an imposter ever become president? Nah, can't happen here. Can a totally illegitimate government ever emerge in the United States of America with everyone watching, doing a deal with a terrorist state like Iran, giving them a path to a nuclear bomb? Nah, it can't happen here. The vote occurred, if you remember, in November. I encouraged you with my book, Stop the Coming Civil War, to vote. I said, hold your nose and vote Republican. Those were my exact words. Hold your nose and vote Republican. And then I said, we'll put their feet to the fire and force them to do our bidding, the will of the people. Well, have we been able to force them to do the will of the people, the bidding of the will of the people? No, not with McConnell, the turkey gobbler, not with John Boehner, the drunk. These guys are not part of the solution they're not even part of the problem they are the problem in fact mcconnell and boehner are worse than obama because they were put there to stop obama this guy we have a word for it in the street that i can't use because it's not a family friendly word this guy is a crazy man he goes to kenya his homeland and he lectures the kenyans who are super conservative socially on gay rights telling them they should accept gays in their country. And the president of Kenya's flabbergasted that this guy, this imposter, comes over there and tells them what they should believe. And then Obama gives it away and he says, yeah, but I know that there are people with religious and uh, social beliefs that don't match what the state wants, but you know what? If it's state law, you gotta do it. And I said, National Socialism. I said, Hitler, National Socialism was the state overriding the will of the people, National Socialism, or for those of you who can't add, Nazis, National Socialism. National Socialism was the state overriding religion of the people of Germany and overriding the will of the people in most cases. Don't assume all the Germans were initially Nazis. They were not. It was a small splinter group that used similar tactics to deceive and then to control and then to intimidate and then absolutely to be what they became, a fascist dictatorship. So he goes to Kenya and he says, it's the state that should rule everything. The law of the land is what the state creates and you could take your religion and shove it 
and you could take your beliefs and shove them because I am Barack Obama and I'm in my homeland now. I'm lecturing my homeland's people what to think about such things. It is a fact that Obama is changing the demographics of America forever. It is a fact that they have flooded Virginia with so many migrants from El Salvador, a wonderful country, by the way, with wonderful people, that, are you ready for this one? You're not going to believe it. A great article by Julia Hahn of Breitbart, the best immigration article I have seen forever. One-fifth the nation of El Salvador is living inside the U.S. of A. And now I'm going to talk about the death squads that the Democrats are bringing into America. I know this is shocking. I realize this is upsetting. But if I read that the MS-13 gang is now entrenched in the land of colonial Williamsburg, would you not call them a death squad? Has anyone noticed that they have death squads now that the police have to face off against? Police who carry sidearms facing those with machine guns? Why? More green cards issued in a year than an entire population of the original 13 colonies. More green cards were issued in one year by Obama than the entire population of the original 13 colonies. One-fifth the nation of El Salvador is living inside the U.S. of A. Why is Obama transforming America into South America? Or shall I say Central America? Why are they here? Why is this corrupt criminal federal government printing millions of visas? Why is this corrupt group of criminals distributing these admission tickets to the poorest and least developed nations in the world? Why is this criminal administration conducting more demographic change in the span of the life of the average person in Virginia than many societies have experienced in millennia? Until 1970, only one in 100 Virginians was born outside the United States. By 2012, one in every nine Virginians is foreign born. So now you know what the puppet master had in mind when he said he was gonna transform America. And he's bringing in death squads with them. You say, that's crazy. Don't they all come here to work? Aren't all immigrants hardworking? Is that why one third of all of our prisoners are illegal immigrants, that they come here to work? Or to work the system? Something you gotta know. In Washington, it's always two parties against the people. Rarely has it ever been anything different. It's always two parties against the people in Washington, D.C. And I am sick and tired of the gangsters flooding America with illegal aliens, flooding America with drugs, flooding America with pollution, flooding America with immorality. I am sick of it. Now, I don't say this very often. I try to control and constrain. But something's got to give. This man is a maniac out of control. I knew he was crazy. I told you he's a madman. I told you he's nuts. I told you he's a psychopath. After getting one victory after another in the Supreme Court, he wants more. Then he hits us with something more. Then he says his one regret so far is he hasn't been able to uh, have gun control. Then he rushes off to Africa and tells him, you stupid people may have a religion and a cultural belief on the gay thing, but you know what? The state trumps all. This is utter utterly unbelievable. This is a week after giving Iran uh, the direct pathway to the bomb. What if there were 100,000 motorcycles showed up in Washington, D.C., blasting their engines, just saying no more, no more, no more. No more, no more, no more. We've got to scare them. There's no, nothing else they will respond to. You see, they fear the people and they hate you. They treat you like nothing, garbage. You're, you're flotsam to them. You're cannon fodder. You're nothing but cannon fodder. Look that one up. Phrase from, I think, an earlier war, cannon fodder. That's what you are to them. But never before in history, the history of any nation, has the demographics of a nation been changed like this, except after a war when the country was conquered and the conquering armies invaded the nation and peopled the nation with their children. That's when the demographics changed as rapidly as what Obama's doing. But since we haven't lost a war, or have we, he's peopling this nation with those from other nations. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Mike Huckabee, who I'm not a huge fan of, I think he's, he's a lightweight. But he said something that I thought was true. I mean, we know that Obama gave Iran 
uh, a pathway to the nuclear bomb. Talk about a pathway to citizenship. He gave them a pathway. Not only that, but it'll protect them from Israel bombing their nuclear facilities. You hear this? In the deal, a side deal. Who was that little, that little, that little monster that was with Kerry all the time with the long hair? I don't know who he was. Some little gnome-like guy kept appearing with long hair hanging down over his head. Who was that? Whatever. He signed the deal. Then the communist woman did the deal. The one who sold us out during the Carter administration. She's still there doing it. You know, these left-wingers never leave. Old left-wingers never die. They just lose their direction. So over the week, a lot of stuff happened. Um, Huckabee says that the deal with Iran is leading the Jewish people to the ovens. Well, dare he step in it. Now, the professional defenders of the Jewish people, those who do it for a living, such as the Adel attack, Huckabee, well, he owes us a, an apology. No, A.B., he doesn't owe me an apology. Maybe he owes you an apology because you lick Obama's boots, Abe Foxman. You're a bootlicker. You've always been a bootlicker of the power structure. He doesn't owe me an apology, A.B. Now, not to be outdone is Wasserman, Wasserman Schultz. Debbie Wasserkaria Schultz jumps in and says, Huckabee owes the Jewish and American people an apology. No, he doesn't. You owe us an apology for even appearing on the public stage. You've set the world back a number of decades. Then, of course, Obama attacked uh, Huckabee. Shows you he really got to them. And Hillary, in clip 14, attacked Huckabee. Listen to this one. Listen to 14. Here's your, here's your girl, Hillary. I am I'm disappointed, and I'm really offended personally. Uh, I know Governor Huckabee. I have a cordial relationship with him. He served as the governor Sorry. of Arkansas. But I find this kind of um, inflammatory rhetoric totally unacceptable. You mean only your inflammatory rhetoric is acceptable? Attacking the Tea Party, attacking the American people, attacking gun owners. That inflammatory rhetoric is fine. You know, but she's going nowhere fast. She's on the... Her, She's the Zeppelin of our times. Hillary Clinton's campaign is the Zeppelin of the 1930s. It's actually on fire and it's hitting, it's aiming to the earth right now. I know a liberal who said they hate her. Liberals hate Hillary. Did you know that's the, the dirty little secret? They hate her. They said, A, she's nobody and be a criminal. That's what people say about her. So for her to say, oh, she's against Huckabee now. Why? What's she so against? Then Obama attacked Huckabee. The best thing on the weekend really was uh, the Jackie Mason stuff. Jackie Mason says New York City restaurants are subject to tougher inspections than the Iran. Than Iran is under the nuclear deal. <laughs> Leave it to an old Borscht Belt comedian. New York City restaurants are subject to tougher inspections than Iran under a nu the nuclear deal. He, <laughs> he said we're better protected in this city from a bad tuna fish. <laughs> Than a bomb from Iran under Obama. You know, humor cuts across all ethnicities, by the way. Then I talked about the Shemitah. To those of you in the Garment Center, it's Shemata. But Shemitah means the Sabbath year. And I read to you what happened in previous ends of Sabbath years on the beginning of the Jewish New Year's. And it doesn't look too good for us for September 13th, 2015. The day before the Jewish New Year. Oh, oh. what happened before that? 2011, September 11th, 201 planes flown into the World Trade Center Tower, September 11th. September 28th, 2008, day before Rosh Hashanah, stock market drops 777 points. Uh, bond market collapses in 94. 87, solar eclipse took place September 23rd, the end of a Shemitah year. 30 days later came Black Monday. Greatest percentage crash of Wall Street history. 1931, a solar eclipse took place September 12th, the end of the Shemitah year. Eight days later, England abandons the gold standard, sets off a market crash. Bank failures around the world. Ushers in the greatest month long stock market percentage crash in Wall Street history. Pardon me for talking uh, in New York fast ease. Over the years in radio, I've had to learn how to speak like an American. And I passed for an American, by the way. I've slowed myself down considerably over the years. But if you really get me started, I speak pretty quickly. That was slow compared to where, how I can actually speak. Savage.